Because of that, you start to feel guilty. And if you repeat this enough times, you end up being like, what's the point? I can't stick to anything. You fall off the bandwagon and you usually stay there until you get that motivation again to do it all over again. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Melissa and this is Jessica. In this video, we're gonna talk about the benefits of calorie cycling. Before we get into it, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell that's somewhere on this page. We'll alert you as soon as we drop a new video. So calorie cycling, this is the preferred method that we use with all of our clients to get them amazing fat loss results and then teach them how to sustain those results literally forever. It kind of goes against a lot of diet principles that are kind of floating around in mainstream like diet world where they kind of tell you drop your calories super low, make sure you're going through periods of extreme restriction, and almost like those places where you feel like you need to really suffer in order to see results. Like cut out the carbs, drop calories to 1200, you know, make sure you're exercising all of the time. Like all of those traditional things that people do in order to see weight loss quick. If you are brand new to this, I would highly recommend you go check out our other video called Calorie Cycling 101. That's gonna tell you exactly what calorie cycling is and we'll kind of give you like a preface to this video. But essentially calorie cycling is a mix of high and low calorie days that at the end of the week still result in a calorie deficit so that you can lose weight without eating the same number of calories every single day. Correct, so we can use calorie cycling for fat loss in which case it nets out to a calorie deficit. We can use it for maintenance and we can even use it to, you know, make sure that we're growing muscle tissue. So there's a number of ways that you can use calorie cycling. In this case, we're going to talk about the benefits of calorie cycling when it comes to fat loss and to your metabolism and your thyroid and your hormones and even like mentally and emotionally, how to give you that like pick me up that you start to like, when you start to get like in the, you know, the depths and the darkness yeah. of dieting, calorie cycling solves a number of problems. Let's start with the physical side of things and then we'll go on to the mental side of things. What benefits does calorie cycling have physiologically for us? So I think that we need to kind of like take a step back and understand that when we are dieting, right, we are reducing the amount of calories that our bodies need in order to maintain our current state. So we're going from like, maintaining our current weight to actually forcing this adaptation where your body is forced to lose body fat. And we do that by creating a calorie deficit. So in traditional diets, a lot of times the calorie deficit that we're creating is very, very vast. Most women, when they think about dieting, they think about dropping their calories to 1200 or even lower. For most of us, that could be even like, you know, a thousand calorie deficit, which is huge and your body starts to register that calorie deficit as a stressor because all your body is understanding is I'm not getting in enough fuel or enough food or energy to maintain my current state. So obviously your body's in like this high alert panic mode trying to figure out, well, what do I need to do to stop my body from running out of body fat and eventually dying, right? Because if your body never stopped that process or never adapted to help slow down that process, then you know we would just continue to run out of body fat until eventually we died. Your body being that very smart machine doesn't wanna let that happen. What happens over time is your metabolism starts to downregulate or it starts to slow down to match the level of intake that you're currently giving your body. Right? Your metabolism, like if, if you think of it in this sense, your metabolism is essentially like a stress barometer. Mm -hmm. And I think that the difference is that a lot of people think of your metabolism as just like a, a calorie burning machine. And that's why so many people just think, well, if I want to lose weight, I just have to, you know, work out more and eat less. Yeah. And like, it is true to an extent, but also when you start to pile on all this stress of like famine, like your body's perceived famine, like that's a high stress on your body and your metabolism is registering that as high stress and then it's preventing you from losing body fat. Yeah, and I think that's that's something that's really important to understand is your body doesn't know that you're intentionally dieting to lose weight. It just understands I'm getting in a lack of fuel or a lack of energy because that is a stressful, like a stressor and your body is essentially designed to constantly be like auto-regulating and f like come back to that homeostatic set point when it perceives that stress, like all of its, you know, resources go to how do I start to like balance out that stress? So instead of, you know, burning a ton of calories and you're eating very few calories, your metabolism now slows down 
to only burn the level of calories that you're currently eating. So that slows your metabolism down, it down regulates your thyroid. When we eat low calories for extended periods of time, it throws off a number of other hormones, right? So leptin, which is your satiety hormone, the hormone that tells your body that you're full and like you feel satiated after eating a meal, those levels drop. And at the same time, ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone, the hormone that's responsible for telling your body, hey, I'm hungry, those levels skyrocket. And so we have this like great disparity between feeling hungry all the time and never feeling satisfied even after like eating a regular meal. That increase in stress will affect your energy levels. So your energy levels tank because you're not getting in enough calories, it impacts your sleep because cortisol levels, your stress hormone, they're through the roof. A lot of your neurotransmitters are thrown off. Things like serotonin, dopamine, even GABA levels, which are coming from you know a lot of foods that you're not really getting into your diet anymore. There are all of these things that have this whole cascading effect. Mood is off, you're hungry all the time, you're battling these intense cravings, right? It's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, they start to like, heighten all of the cravings so you start thinking like oh my god like i just i'm looking at everything and i want all of this food and it puts you in this position where you're literally white knuckling your way through these really restrictive diets to counteract that we use calorie cycling which gives you some lower calorie days but it also gives you higher calorie days and on those higher calorie days you're getting in more food and you're bringing your calories closer back to maintenance level it's almost like not trick your body, but it gives your body a break. So like yeah. on your low days, you're essentially, you know, you're you're more so dieting, you're more so in a deficit. deficit yeah. And then on your high days, they're almost like, we call them refeed days, where it kind of gives your body a little bit of a diet break and your body, your body almost kind of like takes a breather, resets, get this like surge of energy. And it's like, okay, I'm not starving. Yeah. Now, if we're doing that, like week over week, we're calorie cycling. So like you're going through periods of like low days and high days, your body starts to be like, okay, cool. I'm happy with this. Like, I know I'm getting fed. I know that I have these high days coming. And on those days, the stress is reduced mm -hmm. and you're actually able to drop body fat. Right, and so even like on those high calorie days too, those are things that are giving like your leptin levels a boost. It's telling your, you know, your brain, I'm, you know, full, I feel good, like I feel satisfied. You know, it's restoring thyroid function, restoring metabolic function. Like Melissa said, giving energy levels a boost. It's helping to bring down cortisol levels. It's helping to boost neurotransmitter support. There's so many physiological things that bringing your calories up on those high days do for your body. So we use calorie cycling in a way to make sure that we keep your metabolism healthy, your thyroid healthy, your hormones healthy, and to help reduce a lot of those feelings of like hanger, you know, like bad mood, crankiness that you usually get from traditional diets. Yep. So that's the physiological side. Yep. And then I think on the mental side of things, if you have ever thought about like anytime you've ever started a diet, you know, you're a little bit cranky and then all of a sudden like a food commercial comes on, like there's like Arby's, or Wendy's, whatever it is, and Burger it comes thing. on. Yeah, and you're just like, oh my God, like I just want that, I want that right now. And it could be like the most disgusting like roast beef sandwich and you're like, no, like I need to have this right now. The thing is, is that there's a lot of studies that show that dieters have a higher propensity to binge eat because you're actually like, because like Jess said, your, your leptin levels are low, your ghrelin levels are high. And so you're constantly in the state of I'm hungry, like feed me, please give me more food. From a mental side of things, like you're sitting here like battling these these cravings in your head that you normally wouldn't crave now you know that it's due to that hormone imbalance mm -hmm. and then i think like more so with traditional dieting like outside of calories like when you're on a traditional diet you're eating the same number of calories every single day and what happens is the dieter will end up developing developing a, a diet fatigue and so you start to feel like burnt out and you're like i'm bored like yeah. i am eating the same calories every day because it's the same calories every day, you tend to eat like the same foods every day because it's just kind of easy. You, you almost know like get fits, into right? a routine. You essentially get bored and you're like, well, screw this. I, I want to be able to go fun. eat like the fun things that I can't eat on these calories. And then you overeat on the food that like doesn't fit into your day. Because of that, you start to feel guilty. And if you repeat this enough times, you end up being like, what's the point? I can't stick to anything. You fall off the bandwagon and you usually stay there until you get that motivation again to do it all over again. So with calorie cycling, it really does eliminate that, you know, diet burnout, that diet fatigue, because it does give you like mini diet breaks to look forward to. A lot of our lifestyle clients, we have their high calorie days on the weekends 
That way, like during the week, they can kind of like get through the week. You're usually more busy. And then on the weekend, you can look forward to like that mini diet break. They're structured, almost like structured cheat days. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's not a free for all, but you can look forward to, I can go out to dinner. I can have a glass of wine or two. Like I can get pizza ice night, cream ice cream, like whatever it is like all of these foods and drinks and things that you typically can't have on a traditional diet. Now you can fit that into your diet. You can still lose weight and enjoy all the fun foods that you couldn't previously. When we just kind of zoom out, we look at calorie cycling as a way that's checking like two major boxes that most people struggle with when it comes to their dieting journey. The first thing being, you know, you're suffering through super low calorie, very restrictive diets where over time your metabolism slowed way down, you have really poor thyroid function, your hormones are all over the place, your mood is all over the place. And so that's something that's really frustrating and you'll end up you know 30 40 years of dieting without having any results to show for it so using calorie cycling in that way helps to keep your metabolism sped up and also keeps you know your body just healthy to allow you to lose weight and actually keep it off long term and then from the mental and emotional side right giving you those diet breaks those opportunities to look forward to that way you can truly build your diet into your lifestyle and not feel like you have to be so black and white between you know, I'm living my life or I'm sticking to my diet. This is like the lifestyle diet track. Again, this was a super high level overview of the benefits of calorie cycling. If you wanna go more in depth on the benefits, make sure you check out our complete calorie cycling guide in the description below. And that's gonna tell you everything you need to know about why we calorie cycle for all of our clients. Not only is it gonna tell you everything that you need to know about why we calorie cycle, it's gonna teach you how to plan your very own calorie cycle as well. Exactly what to do to get the right number of calories to eat, how to plan your high and low days, and then how to track and evaluate your progress. That way you can get the same type of fat loss results that we get for our clients. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you click the link below to check it out.